as many of my subscribers know, I've done a whole bunch, a load of videos on portable PA battery, internal battery speakers. And I'm here to tell you today that you're not getting your best value for the money. And you're definitely not getting the best performance. What you're getting is convenience. So this is the next step up from those type of speakers and it's less money. So this is my go-to speaker in the portable world. It's called the QSC CP8. I've done videos on it in the past, but today uh, I'm going to do a quick sound test and we're gonna see how many watts it pulls to make it portable with an external battery source. So what are we comparing it to? Well, my favorite right now, the battery speaker that I have reviewed and I've I said it's number one in my book, and that is the Everse 8 at $750. Of course, the new Bose S1 Pro Plus just came out at $700, but this QSC is $500. Now, of course, you're losing Bluetooth and you don't have external battery, internal battery, sorry. So today we're gonna see what an, ex, an internal battery, external battery, sorry, um, will do for us and how many watts it'll pull. So here's the star of the show. I just got it. It's called Best Tech. Got it on Amazon. It's 150 watts, pure sine wave. It has two AC inputs, which I really like because my old, older model, um, Butins that I used for many years already, it only had one AC input and I had to use a power strip when I had a mixer and a couple other things to use. So this is really nice. It has two AC, and then it has a couple of USB charging ports. It has a fan, but I'm going to tell you right now, I haven't heard it. I've been using it for a couple of days already, and I never heard the fan kick on. So 150 watts is, is pretty good, but what really makes this special is the price. Usually what I found with ex, uh, in, external battery sources, it usually goes about a um, dollar a watt. So my 400 watt unit went for $400. My 300 watt unit, $300. But this unit at 150 watts on sale at Amazon, and I don't work for Best Tech, it's on sale. I just got it for like $70. It's really a, a good bargain. So, but, but this is a test I haven't tested yet. Will it run the CP8 at volume? So I have the CP8 pretty much maxed out on the gain. It's at 12 noon, but the mixer is all the way up on the slider. And what I've done is I've set the track uh, in right until it clips. So there's no clip light. I don't want to hurt my um, valuable speaker. So as soon as I saw the red clip light, I backed it off one notch. So I'm about at 1230 on the game on the back. And the track I'm about to use is a track that I've created many months ago, maybe over a year ago. So there's no um, YouTube copyright. So if you like the track, I made it. So here we go. I'm gonna do a max volume sound test. What does the QSC CP8 produce at volume before clipping? And how many watts does it pull? And can this new Best Tech handle it? I, I don't know. I've never done this before. I'm doing it live with you. Here we go. That's a pretty dynamic track. Plus, I'm playing in a space that's uh, wide open in the home here. So, I'm, and I'm sitting back about two and a half, three meters, I haven't measured exactly. And I haven't compared it to the other speakers I mentioned, the Everse 8 or the Bose S um, Plus. But let's see what we got here, 103.1. Well, I can guarantee that the Everse 8 or the Bose uh, Plus speaker, S Pro Plus, would be about 8 dB less. Okay, that would, that would put them at about 95 dB. That's 
pretty much for my other testing. So this is pretty loud. And this, is, this was the surprising part of the test. What I pulled from the wall was only 31.6 watts. That, that's kind of amazing. So you don't even need a 150 watt unit to run the CP8. All you need is something like less than 50 watts, but you always want some room. Anyway, 30, less than 32 watts it pulled at max volume. So I don't know about you, but I don't usually play it at that kind of volume. I was actually using a hearing protection. So I usually play maybe under 90 dB. So the volume, when it goes down, you're gonna have that much more runtime because the, wat the watch pulled would be less. This is a this was a heavy bass track. So if you play other tracks that not quite as heavy bass, you're also gonna have greater runtime. So I should make myself clear. That last sound demo, uh, I was plugged into AC, into the wall, because I couldn't get a correct um, reading from my watt meter. So now I'm gonna play that same track with it plugged into the the new uh, external battery source and at that full volume 103 db if the external battery source couldn't handle it it'll shut down either the speaker will shut down or the battery itself will shut down and this has happened to me in the past when i play speakers that are too much for the external battery so we're going to play that same track one more time and this time we're going to be running off the external battery source so again, never done this before, testing live. If it shuts down, then I know I can't use 150 watts for the speaker, then I'm gonna have to go up to my next external battery source, which is a big jump up, 300 watts. But let's see. still have our power light on and obviously it didn't shut down at that max volume and I'm gonna say it again that's a pretty demanding track as far as bass so this test has been a success this external batteries pack is something I'm going to recommend especially at this price $70 I don't know how long it will last at these kind of volumes um, there is a formula I have to uh, look it up online give you a rough estimate obviously I just got this so I haven't actually done it any long-term tests so we will see here's something that no other external battery source that I have can do and that is it fits really nicely the form factor it's kind of long and skinny sits right up on top of the speaker of course I would have to velcro it down or bungee cord kind of looks interesting uh, that hole there that's for the fan I don't hear anything. It's it's absolutely silent. Interesting. Look at this setup. Because of that thin form factor, it could fit under the speaker. No other battery source that I've had or seen can do this. And it comes with a nice neoprene case that the speaker doesn't scratch it up. Really interesting um, choices you have using this. So you don't have to put the speaker up on a stand. You can just play it in your bedroom like this. So there you go. Let's wrap it up. Um, if you're looking for performance, then I'm going to not go with a speaker that has a battery built in. You're paying extra money for that. Of course, you do get other bells and whistles. But if you're just looking for strictly performance the, uh, the way I do, because I, I play drums live then uh, through a mixer, so I don't need the, the uh, all the bells and whistles. I don't need the reverb because the mixer has the reverb. I don't need Bluetooth because I don't think Bluetooth is reliable enough for live gigs. So the only thing, you're paying a, a, quite a bit more money. This is $500 plus the $70 for the power source, 570. You're still nowhere near the 750 of the Everse 8. And what are you getting for that Everse 8? Well, you're getting bells and whistles, but I don't need the internal battery that you're paying quite a bit for. 
And then again, once the internal battery goes, um, you know, you can buy separate units, but this is a lot cheaper. Okay, hope you enjoyed this video. This is Bill. Later.